In every game, the developers design it so you can't hurt the kids. No matter how hard you try, the youthful little malakas take the beatings better than Amber Heard did, mainly because the beatings never happen. I fully understand it. Why would a company want to be known for releasing a product that encouraged such debauchery? Even Grand Theft Auto, a game known for its violence, chose to not even include kids. A Red Dead Redemption has almost no kids, and when they do, they're in safe zones looking smug and annoying. In 2006, however, Rockstar did release a game featuring the younger generation, Bully. In Bully, you play as a 15-year-old big guy named Jimmy Hopkins. You're enrolled in boarding school where you have to go to class, obey the rules, visit freak shows at carnivals, take lewd photos of cheerleaders, harass your teachers, and most importantly, absolutely destroy kids of all ages in hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's been two years since I've made a video on this absolute masterpiece, and I wanted to play it again. I spawn in my dormitory, ready to seize the day via a good education. The sun is shining, and then I spot a little first grader rushing to class, so I decide to waste no time and I begin beating him. I land a few good blows, but then the prefects start chasing me, as violence against little kids is quite a serious offence at this school. I have, however, now shown that I'm the lion in this animal kingdom we call Bullworth Academy. I escape and rush to class, as I don't want to fall behind. My first lesson is geography, and I have to match the American states. Apparently I know them better than I would have guessed and I passed the class. I've never seen a kid be so psyched about geography before, fist pumping for Minnesota. As I walk the halls, all the girls want a piece of Hopkins. If I want to kiss them though, I have to give them something like flowers or chocolate. I basically pay them in exchange for physical favours. If you like this video, I'll give you a little smooch. I then remember I can bully the little kids with words instead of fists and not get in as much trouble. You're a moron. Our next class is maths. Which is fastest? It's a trick question. It's the sloth because the others are inanimate objects. More cheering, just like I used to do after class. I skate back to my room because I'm the reject kid with a heart of gold. On the way, I decide to pull off the ultimate Christian prank. I decide to wedgie a prefect. It goes well, but I figure I better leave the school grounds for a while until the heat dies down. I skate over to the Bullworth town and the police are after me. I'm about to do 20 to life for a little joke. Luckily, the police officer gets his car stuck. That lamppost just changed Jimmy's entire life trajectory. This man then asks if I can catch some crabs for him. I agree as there's nothing like gathering seafood to wind down after a busy school day. It takes me all evening, but he pays me $20. I whimsically skip back to the boys dorm, now rich enough to pay for all the smooches in the world. I then change into my school uniform so I can stop getting in trouble for dress code violations. Before bed, I decide to see what my fellow students are up to. They're just throwing explosives at each other. A classic boys dorm banter. I then climb into my bed in my school clothes because Jimmy has no self-respect. The following morning, I wake up to this. Useless sissy! I pull out my firework gun and start barraging the prefects. I manage to drop one, but his boy comes in and starts dodging the rockets like he was Neo. Pretty impressive, and then he grabs me by the throat even though I didn't give him flowers first and takes me to detention. I meant to mow the lawn, but instead I attempt to vehicular manslaughter the lad supervising me. This causes detention to restart, and it becomes clear that I'm going to have to start obeying the school rules. My little Aquaberry school vest and I finish our punishment and set off to be a good student. Then this midget says he'll pay me $15 if I stuff three kids into bins. I guess he just wants to watch the world burn. What is wrong with this school? I take the hit because dogs gotta eat, but I probably didn't need to beat the kids as much as I did. Having spent all day on the tools, I decide to use my evening free time to kiss more girls. And playing this game is the only way you can kiss 15 year olds and not go to prison. I lose track of time and me and this lass accidentally violate curfew. The prefect just watched us closely for a while, which is concerning, and then brutally took her down, allowing me to escape. I'm sure she's doing just fine. I take a sip of water, which I love as an included feature, and then hit the sack. Bullworth Academy has various groups, like the nerds, the jocks, the cheerleaders, and so on. Just imagine old high school movies. Jimmy wants to ally with the nerds and defeat the jocks so that he can become king of the school. Today we skip class and make that happen. The issue is, the nerds don't really want to work with me, so I'm going to have to force them. I begin working my way through all of them until they give up the location of their leader. Contrary to popular belief, nerds don't cope well with physical confrontation. They tell me their nerd leader is in the library. Just kidding, he's in a fort that's guarded by men with automatic weapons. This high school has serious behavioural issues. How have none of the teachers or prefects noticed that the nerds have converted an entire valley into their own defensive gauntlet? I reach the last line and it's like I'm storming Omaha Beach. They've got a turret shooting potatoes at me. Dangerous and wasteful. 
I break in and win their respect, and we agree to take down the jocks. To get back to the boys' dorm, I have to go via the football field. On my way, one of the players gives me a noogie. There's no gesture more disrespectful than a noogie. As he walks off, I clap back, and the next thing I know, half the team is chasing me around the oval. This is next level bullying. I think Jimmy's only course of action is to go home, get a good night's rest, practice mindfulness, and think about the bigger picture and living in the present, and then buy an AR-15. I try and at least hit on their girlfriends, but even she just laughs at little Hoppy. It's probably the preppy vest, I'm not sure what I was thinking. Before we launch our assault on the jocks, I figure I better go to a few classes so I don't drop out. First I have biology where I give heart surgery to a frog, and then music class where the homies and I play some fire tunes. Jimmy sure does know his way around a pair of dodgy maracas. Now I'm not sure why they added this feature, but as we know, when you walk up behind a guy, you can give them a wedgie. When you walk up behind a girl, however, you have the option to pinch their bum. I decide to test this on one of the younger students, and yes you can. I didn't even try to run, just give Hopkins the chair. On my way back from detention, there's a kid getting beaten by a baseball bat as other students applaud and cheer. It's hard to focus on my frog surgery lessons with all this going on, so I decide to head out into the town and reinvent myself. New haircut that screams daddy's boy. A fresh brave outfit combining a baseball jersey with basketball shirts and dress shoes down the bottom to catch the drip. Ready to head back to school, I notice a guy on a moped. I throw a firecracker at him and steal his bike. The police pursue me, and this isn't exactly the new year new me I was hoping for. Despite the horsepower and age difference, I escape and make my way to the library so we can begin destroying the jocks. These two nerds proceed to ask me if I can be their escort to the local carnival. I say yes because I actually quite like carnivals, they're very happy places, plus it's the main story so I have no choice. I make my way inside and this dude tells me the jocks have cornered his friend inside the funhouse. He also seems to be having some kind of seizure. He needs to eat more sodium. The fun house has cool optical illusions which I already know all about. The right angle and good lighting can make anything look big. The jocks are beating my boys so I jump in and defend them. These fights aren't your classic schoolyard tiffs. There are violent bare knuckle haymakers being thrown. You love to see it. I save the nerds but I decide to stick around and see what else the carnival has to offer. By that I mean I mostly just go around pinching women on the ass as this area lacks a strong police presence. You can harass whoever you want, it's like living in Saudi Arabia. I ride the roller coaster and I race the go-karts, but nothing could quite prepare me for the freak show. One day I was fine, normal and healthy. The next I was dying, slowly, surely. They've put people in glass enclosures so guests can watch. This exhibit is just called Fat Ugly Bearded Woman. She just watches TV and this guy in the Hawaiian shirt can't get enough. There are Siamese twins and their room is absolutely trashed. You've got four hands, tidy up a little bit. You can bet on dwarves who box each other. There's a tattooed man in a cell that resembles an insane asylum who just screams and bashes the glass. You would not see this in games these days. There's also a mermaid who swims around and blows kisses at you. You've really got to suspend your disbelief for that one. It got late fast and if it reaches 2am, Jimmy passes out and then people steal his clothes. No one's safe. Fortunately, I own the local lighthouse and I can sleep there. Lighthouses are great for many reasons. They help guide sea vessels to safety, and they give you an excuse to buy pastel-coloured woolen sweaters. Every 15-year-old should own a lighthouse. I skate back to school so we can continue taking down the jocks. The head nerd has a grand plan where I will take lewd photos of a girl he likes. Remember the head cheerleader who rejected me? Well, he wants some saucy photos. I hide up in the stands while she's training and take a few shots, which is pretty pervy, but it's not that bad. At least when you compare it to my next photo shoot location, I head over to the girls' dorm and notice two lads scrapping it out. It's a real David versus Goliath situation as a grown-ass greaser-looking man picks on a little guy. A prefect comes in to save the day, but he grabs the 10-year-old boy by the scruff of the neck. He then does his trademark body slam choke and just leaves the kid gasping for air on the ground while he gives the greaser a verbal warning. Harsh but fair. I sneak inside the building up to the bathroom, and I kid you not, I have to take photos of her while she's in the shower. Bully simply hits different. I also take this photo of her, but it just looks like she has scoliosis. I give the cheeky dog his photo and get paid. Not entirely sure how this helped us take down the jocks, but at least we have a creative outlet. Jimmy has handles, especially considering he's wearing formal dress shoes. His shooting game isn't great though, so we better stay focused on that dream frog surgeon job. Finally, the nerds have formulated an actual plan. 
First we have to steal the football team's mascot costume. I head down to the field and throw a frisbee at him and miss. Hopkins can 540 down a staircase on a skateboard but can't keep his frisbee throws from rising. I throw other balls at him but his friends quickly come to his aid. The jock's comradeship is inspiring, especially when compared to the nerds who are textbook perverts. Jimmy may have picked the wrong side here. I run to the gym teacher for support but he just joins the chase. To escape, I aggressively grab his balls. We may have genuinely groped every single person in Bullworth. I lure the mascot into an empty terrifying dark swimming pool and kick his teeth in. Classic high school stuff. We have now secured the mascot costume so it was all worth it. It's been a hot minute since I went to class so I decide to attend today. The first is art class where I paint a picture of my teacher who's laying seductively and some would say inappropriately. I'd smash. The second is gym class which may as well be called UFC. Everyone cheers as the gym teacher explains new fighting techniques which I use to kill this kid. I spit on his face at the end and receive a well-earned passing grade. It's not all happy days. Cheerleader girl is upset because her nudes have leaked. Being the great guy Hopkins is, he offers to help her out. They've been printed out and put on posters all around the school. I go to cover one of the posters in town and there is a grown man eye-banging her. This game throws some real curveballs at you. The important thing is to always remember your country's age of consent and if it's too high you can always move to Nigeria. I let the big girl know it's been taken care of and she gives me a little smooch. I'm still wearing the mascot uniform so she kisses fabric which is unhygienic but still cute. It's now time to finish off those pesky jocks who all seem like really great friends who have each other's backs. I learn the mascot dance so I can go deep undercover. And now when I walk past a group of jocks, instead of them immediately assaulting me, I can just do a little dance and they love it and leave me alone. Our first prank is replacing their training football with one that explodes upon impact. Just some good, clean, Al-Qaeda inspired fun. I'm pretty sure that guy just died, but at least we're teaching these jocks that nerds rule. Our second prank is putting super glue on the benches. I can't help but feel that this one isn't on the same level as the C4 football. Still, sticky pants will surely ruin a few people's afternoon. I work my way into the gymnasium, constantly dancing to ensure I don't attract attention to myself. I then pee in the Kool-Aid, which I think is the perfect middle ground for a prank. No one's going to hospital due to explosive maiming, but it's still disgusting. And time for the final prank. The scoreboard currently says, go get em guys, so I hack it and change it to jocks play with their balls. This tips them completely over the edge and they're furious with me. The whole school comes out and watches our last standoff as they fight me on the football field. So many questions. There must be teachers watching this fight from the stands and not doing anything. More explosive footballs are being thrown, this is a war zone. Also, jocks play with their balls is pretty tame. I mean, most guys play with their balls at some point. It should be celebrated. The rain and lightning comes down and I get my opportunity to sack the quarterback. Instead of doing a traditional NFL tackle, I just punch him in the jaw because that's what my teacher taught me. Hopkins has this epic, this is my school moment. It really is his school too, he's popular with everyone. They all have his back now and won't be picking fights anymore. Which means there's never been a better time to bully the little kids. I pull out my firework rocket launcher and begin exterminating them all. If you enjoyed this video, hit like. I love you and goodbye.